Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about how to optimize production in the mining industry. And through that, we're going to ask you, are you really producing the maximum of copper? Are you recovering the right amount of water from your process to maximize metal production? So here with us today, we have Dr. Osvaldo Basco. Osvaldo, you are a digital transformation consultant with 25 years experience in the mining industry. You are also a doctor in metallurgical engineering and you won the Golden Award. Thank you for being here with us today. First, we will talk about the industry business integration secrets. We will see how continuous learning helps to optimize the mining process, but we will also present the digital twin, a new tool to optimize the production of copper and water recovery. So first, Osvaldo, can you tell us more about the main problems that plants are facing in the mining industry? Thank you, Clemence. Good morning, everybody. I'm very glad here to share what we have been doing over the last couple of years. We have been helping customers with their Pi systems, with their new tools for advanced analytics. The major problem we see in the mining industry is that we are dealing with very low-grade ore, producing very large volumes of rocks that go through a plant and we use a lot of energy and need to duplicate or even triplicate the amount of water that are produced. And we are finding that we can recover a lot more water and definitely augment the production. Some plants have been not able to produce everything because they have been with constraint of water. We need to change the business processes, how we operate the plants, how we use the data in different layers for on a daily basis to do the best planning possible. There is a lot of discrepancy between the variances and the execution of data. We wrote a book, which is called The Digital Transformation in the Process Industries, where everything is related to how to minimize the variance and improve the planning of the production when you have these low grade ores, because they are going to get more and more difficult as we go through. The problem we have here are really that too many silos, too many microcultures running with Excel spreadsheets. Information for management is lacking terrifically. So there is an opportunity to redesign the business processes and work much faster by communicating and collaborating for the whole plan in the chain supply. So the integrated of the industrial complex within the enterprise and the planning and execution has to be redefined. This is just showing visually that we have the mine, the operation, we got engineering, maintenance, and all could be very easily helping into producing better plans and better execution. It's not only process control here, this is augmenting process control with the right planning. And the major problem that we have is really that we need to maximize the throughput and being within the constraint that we have in the flotation process, where we know very clearly that the elephant curve here, which was developed by Professor Lynch by doing many audits within the industry, it's the same thing that we have in one of the plants that we have been working where uh, below 50, you start losing a lot of copper. Be upper 250, 300 micro, you lose because the flotation cells have not changed. They are using the same flotation cell that were designed 50 years ago. And that's not going to solve the problem. So we need to work within these constraints. And these constraints are also related to water. You want to maximize the net metal production rate but it depends on the amount of water. So when you are producing this variable size, as you are going to see with the data we have, you lose a lot of water and have problem with the overflow of the mill, hydrocyclone rapid, and you cannot recover the water. The water changes drastically as you're going to see when you have fines specifically. So the way we are grinding is one of the key things to push to the constraint so we can maximize the the copper production and the water necessary to maximize the production of the metal. This shows you the continuous improvement required, which is the learning that you need to have 
in real time because you get these KPIs and you identify the targets. And targets are planned, are the plan coming from your planning and you need to compare to what you got. And by having this continuous improvement and innovation, you can find out the root cause and the models that you need to be predicting so you can eliminate them. We need to change a flotation system or a cyclone or a pump. And this is done through the engineering group that is analyzing the data and fine tuning the plant with the data, with your historical data that you are collecting. Pat Kennedy used to say something very interesting. The history of production is the most important asset of the enterprise. And analyzing that by the process engineer and coming up with the solutions to maximize the benefits and profits is the key to define your portfolio of projects for implementation. And very few people are using this important asset correctly. So to get started with what we call the continuous learning effect, you need to have this Ishikawa diagram or fish bone with all the key variables. People becomes a very important issue here because there is a tremendous disturbances by the changes of the shift because there is not a good transition between one shift to the other. And by having the digital twin, whatever happened, it is in the history. We need to have that information available for the new team that is coming on a weekly basis, they know what's happened and everything is documented correctly. So much documentation goes verbal, but they need to be documented. And this is Chicago Pro is really the model of the digital twin. And the next step of this slide shows you that you need to integrate with the water recovery and the tailings. In many cases, we have the plant running independently, how the mine is operating, how the shifts are being handled, and how the a water recovery is very important. At the same time, maintenance has to be included here because the maintenance the schedule of the equipment, you don't want to have downtime. You need to eliminate them. And you need to know the consumption of energy and water and the losses. If you want to maximize this, you want to reduce your operating costs. Thank you, Osvaldo. You talk about the digital twin, right? Can you tell us a bit more about this tool and how it does help to optimize copper production and water recovery? Uh, very good. The digital twin is really an attraction on how you are doing your decision support. It's not a process control system. It uses the data that is collected by the process control system to forecast in real time and to be in a predictive environment to maximize your copper. So you need to take these KPIs and run them in real time and identify what are the constraints and what is the type of ore and what are the best set points that we need for having that in this case. The digital twin takes this raw data from the, the plant and we have to transform it into really information. So for that, we need to classify the operational event. Data times these events is where the algorithm transforms that into information. That's what we are bringing to the table. So we want to automate that. We have information to develop the best suitable models with all the metallurgical engineering and mineral processing engineer that we have collected over the years. So we have better decision-making. This better decision-making from edge or local to engineering and to management is what needs to be improved by the digital twin. The digital twin really sits in the center collecting all this data, doing this analysis. So when people want to analyze that and want to go back to see what happened when we were running type of one, you just click to that time and you get all the parameters estimated for that period of time. Then you have the same more again, you already have a recipe based upon your engineering group that is doing this capturing of knowledge, knowledge here to coordinate the activities of the plant for continuous improvement and innovation, meaning that you cannot continue using the same principle. You have to change to improve. And this is not just data. This is all business processes that needs to be reinvented. 
So I understood that you have both to act on the human part, the processes, but also the technical parts. Can you explain us how do you exactly implement the digital twin into a plant? Very good question. What we do is that we take all this data, which is usually in process historian, but nobody has been able to construct what the historian capabilities have, where we can have the grinding area, the flotation area. Those are going to be running this online analytics to transform the data into information, capturing the hidden losses when the plant goes down, when the plant goes from, let's say, 5,000 tons per hour, they decides to go to 3,000. What happened? We need to fix that. It has to be extremely precise. And by capturing that, management has to be involved and identify what are the hidden losses that we have. To solve the problem, we need to repair the road, meaning that we need to predict how we are going to go through those batches when we have type 3 compared to type 1. Because we have the block diagram from the mine, we'll be able to prepare the plant to run at 4,000 tons per hour today with these characteristics on percent solids, particle size, distributions, to have that correctly. This part is where you spend a lot of time and then you predict them. So you start predicting and learning what is copper production for that type of ore? What is the distribution of particles that we need in the sag mill, in the output of the grinding for flotation, and then you deploy that because this will tell you are going to be feeding back as a continuous improvement loop. And then you maintain this environment for the process engineers. This is process engineers in, in very much into in the knowledge, presenting the knowledge to maximize the production what you are saying, Osvaldo, is by implementing new data as with the plant running, you can adapt each model with the historical data that you have and optimize the way you are producing, right? That's right. We are going in a fit forward way because we have a capability today of doing what's called predictive analytics. Mm -hmm. We are not just going to wait for the mill to go down. It went down. It needed maintenance. We needed to change this. We needed to add more water. But that's already gone and we lost millions of dollars. These are millions of dollars that can be recovered very quickly because the only thing that we need to do is to add intelligence to the rock. Very well, interesting. Thank you for this inspiring presentation, Osvaldo. There is a lot to learn here. For people who are interested about getting more details about this presentation, but also about water recovery, copper production, do not hesitate to contact us or to send us your questions. Thank you so much, Osvaldo, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, and be looking forward to have a conversation with you. Bye.